today we are making pasta with the sushi mat. Cavatelli is a really fun shape and it just happens to be the easiest shape to make. You can do this with your family, you can do this with your friends on Zoom, over a glass of wine, you can even do this all by yourself. I find it very relaxing. I'm not very good at meditation, so if I need to clear my mind, I make pasta. Before we get to the dough, let's soak some dry porcini mushrooms for our sauce. I'm using 28 grams of porcini and two cups of boiling water. Give them an hour and you'll have the most delicious mushroom liquid to sauce your pasta. Now on to the dough. This is exactly the same dough I showed you how to make in my orichetti video, but I do have a little correction to that video. The flour I used in that video is called semolari macinata. I incorrectly called it semolina because it's often sold under this name in the United States. Turns out there is a difference. Both semola and semolina are made from durum wheat, but semola is ground finer. Italian semola is the best flour for this dough, but I have tested it with American semolina and it was very good, even though the texture of the flour was coarser. My guess is that my use of extremely hot water makes American semolina usable for the purposes of pasta, even though it's not the best flour for the job. Thanks to my wonderful viewer, Adam Churvis, for bringing it to my attention. What I'll do today is is replace a bit of my semola flour with whole wheat flour to make my pasta more earthy, but that's completely optional. Dump the flour mix into the food processor. Add 175 grams of water at 170 Fahrenheit. Start the processor. You might need to scrape it down a bit. When you get the little tornado of dough, get it out and knead for eight minutes. In the beginning, it will be very sticky, but will quickly even out. If you are in a very humid environment, you might need to add some flour when kneading. For a very detailed video of this technique, check out my water-based pasta dough video in the description below. Sprinkle the dough with flour on both sides. Wrap it up and let it rest for 30 minutes. I should probably tell you what people in Italy use to shape this pasta. They use a board with ridges. You can certainly buy one of those on Amazon, but I never bothered to do that because I already had a sushi mat at home. Unlike the pasta boards, sushi mats are available at most supermarkets for just a few dollars, so I thought it might be a cheaper and more accessible option for most people. Besides, it's fun to say that you've made pasta with a sushi mat. <laughs> Line a cookie sheet with parchment paper or foil and sprinkle it liberally with semola flour. This is where we'll place our finished pasta. Place the dough on a lightly floured surface and cut it into strips. Roll out the strips on an unfloured surface. This ensures that they won't slide. When you get the rope that is half an inch in diameter, cut the strips into little pieces. Coat the pieces generously with flour. For shaping, you can use either semola or all-purpose. I'm using all-purpose. Place a piece on a sushi mat and roll it from one rope to the other. The most important thing is to apply a lot of pressure with your finger to create a hollow shape. This helps your pasta cook evenly and also helps it trap the sauce. You don't want to end up with fat little cylinders because they'll taste tough and gummy. I usually line a bunch of pieces next to one rope and then roll them starting with the piece closest to me. If you encounter any sticking, use more flour. If you want your ridges to be more diagonal, roll your pieces at a slight angle. Here, let's do that slowly. See? A little angle. When you finish a pile, dump the cavatelli onto the baking dish. Make sure to keep them in a single layer so that they don't stick together. By the way, while you are working with one rope of dough, it's generally a good idea to cover the rest of the dough with plastic wrap so that it doesn't dry up. As I was editing this video, I realized that I forgot to do that. That's fine if you can shape really quickly, but probably not a good idea on your first try. <laughs> okay, our pasta is done and we can make a sauce. 
This dish is a mushroom lover's dream. The flavor will come from that delicious porcini liquid and the texture will come from the fresh mushrooms. I have some portobellos here that I'll cut into a large dice. Yes, it's completely okay to wash them and dry them. I'll also add some maitake mushrooms that are known as hen of the woods. But you can use whatever mushrooms you want. Maitake are much more delicate than portobello, so I wouldn't wash them. Luckily, they grow on trees, so there is no dirt to wash off especially since these ones are cultivated. Slicing them will give me plenty of flat surfaces that will brown nicely. I discard the thicker stems because they tend to be a bit woody and dirty. Let's give this a coarse chop. You don't need to make them too small. They'll naturally break apart as they cook. I also have a few little shiitake caps that we'll use. When you chop your mushrooms, keep the sturdy ones and flimsy ones separate. Sturdy ones would be portobello, cremini or button mushrooms, and flimsy ones would be maitake, shiitake, chanterelle, oyster and other more delicate varieties. This way, we can give the sturdy mushrooms a head start in the skillet before adding the flimsy ones. In the end, you should have about 500 grams of chopped up mushrooms. Let's set a large, deep skillet of a high heat and add two tablespoons of olive oil. When the oil is hot, add the portobellos and a pinch of salt. Have a lid handy, add a splash of dry white wine and cover immediately. Let the mushrooms cook for a couple of minutes to release their moisture. Uncover the pan and wait for all the moisture to evaporate. Then add the flimsy mushrooms, another pinch of salt, and another glug of oil. Continue cooking on high heat, checking regularly. Don't stir until you get color. This looks good. Let's stir. Keep cooking like this, regulating the heat so that the mushrooms brown steadily but don't burn. Ah, uh, that's a beautiful mushroom. When you have a lot of browning, take the pan off heat and get the mushrooms out so that the porcini liquid and pasta water don't make them soggy. Add a quarter cup of dry white wine to the pan. You should probably wait a bit for the pan to cool off. Then strain the porcini liquid through a damp paper towel lined colander into the pan. Don't skip the paper towel or you might have a sandy sauce. The next step always raises a lot of eyebrows in my classes. I throw away the dry porcini. If yours are clean and not full of worms, by all means, chop them up and use them. But for the life of me, I cannot find such porcini where I live. Mine are always so dirty that I have to wash every little piece five times, scraping the dirt out of every crevice. They are also insanely wormy. These worms are dead and harmless, but not very appetizing. So I prefer to limit myself to the soaking liquid. Whenever I travel to France, I always manage to find porcini without these issues. So just because I throw mine away doesn't mean you need to throw yours away. Bring your porcini liquid to a simmer. Dump your pasta into a pot of boiling crazily salted water. Stir and cover just until you get your boil back. When the pasta floats, give it a minute and start tasting. You want it to be slightly undercooked because it will cook more in the mushroom sauce. Get the pasta out with a slotted spoon and into the pan with porcini liquid. Don't drain on a colander so that the flour that we use to prevent sticking stays in the bottom of the pot. Cook on low heat, stirring constantly until the sauce barely starts to thicken. Taste for salt and if you need more, splash in some pasta cooking water or just add salt directly. Stir in a third of a cup of heavy cream and let everything simmer for a minute. Keep tasting all along, but don't season it all the way yet since the sauce will continue to reduce. When the sauce is thick enough that a spoon leaves a trail, add two tablespoons of butter, a generous sprinkling of parmesan, the mushrooms, and the little parsley and chives. Stir it all together and taste carefully for salt. Keep adding pasta water to make the sauce a bit runnier than you would ideally want because it will continue to thicken for a couple of minutes as you serve the pasta. 
This is a phenomenal dish. It's both luxurious and comforting at the same time. I hope you give it a try and make this pasta with someone you love, whether you do it in person or not. Here are more culinary tutorials for you to check out. And if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.